What are some common challenges that you observe in strategy execution? People tend to make a strategy that looks very good on paper, but innovation is to turn these things into something that people can use. Many CEOs and founders did not pay enough attention to the development and training of middle managers. Everyone say that people is the most precious asset. However, when the economy down, they will cut people first. You have to separate um, business relationship from family relationship. To manage a big group is that you have to be fair, but you cannot be kind. và các bạn đã đến với People Matter mùa 2 để bàn về những chủ đề liên quan đến chuyển hóa lãnh đạo, chuyển hóa tổ chức và quản trị nhân sự trong thời kỳ biến động cùng với các khách mời là giám đốc nhân sự, các CEO, các giám đốc chiến lược và những chuyên gia cố vấn dày dặn kinh nghiệm trong việc dẫn dắt sự thay đổi và làm mới tổ chức tại các tập đoàn hàng đầu tại Việt Nam và thế giới. People Matter mùa 2 với sự đồng hành của đối tác chiến lược Upstream, giải pháp không gian làm việc hiệu quả hàng đầu tại Việt Nam. And I'm Min Zhang, the CEO and co-founder of New In Consulting Company. I will be your host for today. And today is our great honor to invite here Professor Nguyen Hui Kui. He is a current professor of strategy at INSEAS and director of the INSEAS Strategy Execution Program. And he has published over 80 works on strategy change, strategy execution, and organizational innovation in the world. And he's, um, his research has won 11 international awards and has been published in major academic journals. Professor Hui Kui is ranked among the top 2% of most cited scientists in the fields of business and management. And today we talk about the leading organizational innovation. I'm sure today that uh, Professor like Hui Kui have a lot of inside practical experience can deliver to the audience and I'm sure you can listen, apply right away back to your business and your company to transform and to start like a disruptive innovation. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Kuihi, uh, Professor Kuihi. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ming Zhang. No, thank you for having me here. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's my pleasure to be able to share some of my insights yeah. know, from my research with, with you and the audience. We just talk about the uh, IKEA and we may start the story today about IKEA. And I think this is the standout case story, right? Um, where innovation and, st and strategy change in transform a business and organization. So can you share more about this case? Yeah. So I like to, to because I like to, to start with a, uh, the, st the story, you know, how the company was founded, because, you know, how the company was innovating over years uh, give us an insight and uh, lessons that uh, Vietnamese entrepreneurs could learn. So, so, so in Bac Camprat, uh, when he was uh, starting back in the 1940s in Sweden, he was very poor, right? He was a, uh, a roaming salesman. So he was driving in his little car and with all kinds of goods like combs, you know, pans, you know, <laughs> albums, right? So he That's was very basic. Uh, very <laughs> basic, you know, very yeah. basic, low tech, cheap stuff, you know, and he was, uh, Trying to was going from villages to villages, you know, in Sweden and Scandinavia, to sell to the homes of poor people. He noticed that, that those poor people in Scandinavia, 1940s, cannot afford furniture. Right? you know, they have a very basic furniture at, at that time. Right, so either during that time in Europe, either you are you're quite rich, and then you can buy fancy furniture, you know, wood furniture, but very expensive. Or they had the very basic furniture, like they sit on boxes, you know, like this one. So he said that he would try to innovate by building some kind of products, by you know, by 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 having what we call today a business model. And his first business model is that he said that he could use uh, economies of, of of scale, meaning that he would be. Um, uh, um, putting on drawings, uh, his drawings he would go to some good um, furniture making. He said, uh, give me a few designs. You know, that is a good, basic, but um, but beautiful, you know, it's look good looking. And uh, he would show those drawings to, to people in the homes. He said that I need I need 20 people to buy this one because, because with 20 purchases, then I can have a good price for you. Right. So, you know, so after showing the thoughts, those people start to buy, you know, based on, you know, on the catalog. It was called a catalog, you know, based on toys, very simple toys, right? But that 
he started his business uh, model uh, that way. That was a very innovative at that time. Nobody did that. Thing. <laughs> I think that's really good strategy, right? Yeah, it was yeah. strategy. Yeah. Now it's a very uh, low cost, right? Low cost. Now you know you you know if that it's just like a bulk purchase, right? You know if you can convince twenty homes, twenty families to that one, then I put in order. Everybody benefit from a, lo a lower cost. Then I deliver to you. you no, know, that I make money from this, right? I think mean, today we can still learn from it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this kind of this kind of in Vietnam, especially, we can still have this kind of business model. So then he became quite successful. Then he get a few more uh, people, you know. So then, so then he said, uh, "Now I can open a store in 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 the city, right? Mm -hmm. To 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 sell, uh, you know, good basic furniture at a lower price, mm -hmm. you know." Yeah. So he he opened his first store in a in in, in the city, and then the, all the big businesses believed that he, it was very dangerous competition. So he didn't like him at all because you know he was a, a disruptor. <laughs> yeah. He was a disruptor because they are lowering their prices, right? You know, yeah. because all these prices in downtown, you know, they say they are they were used to selling, you know, expensive furniture, you know, to to, to rich people. And now this guy is coming in and he's selling, you know, moderate furniture, you know, for moderate budget people. And, you know, and he got a lot of customers and he didn't like it at all, right? He was a disruptor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's really a threat. <laughs> yeah, the threat. Yeah, he's yeah. a threat of business because they had a very much political power. So they went to the mayor of the city and they talked to the legislators, the politicians that, you know, to close down that business. They said that, you know, because they, they said that, this business is causing too much traffic, you know, too much traffic jam. <laughs> we don't like it, you know, it's causing disruption in the city, you know. So somehow they, he, he got, they, you know, they, they, yeah. they got their way. So he was kicked out, you know. So they voted and the business, he was not allowed to create his business in the city. He had to move uh, outside the city. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he moved outside the city, you know. So somewhere that there was nobody, so nobody, you know, so nobody in the forest, near the forest, where, where there's no cars, no traffic, nobody is going there. So, so all his uh, competitors thought that now no, he's, he's really died. You know, nobody goes there, right? But he, he built a somewhere big, a big warehouse. He had he created a lot, a lot of parking space because it's forest, right? So people can go there and and with any kind of vehicles, right? To attract people, I said, if you come by, I offer free food. Meaning, you know, hot dogs. You know, it's very cheap food, but hot dogs. Right? So when he opened, a lot of people <laughs> came to his store because that means they had good products, right? So they had uh, the good products, you know. So, so that's where the innovation of free food come from. Now, when you go to IKEA, they got a lot of good food, right, for a very moderate price. Wow, and it started for a long time. It started, that, that, and that, that was his his idea to you know to 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 get people in, you know. To, to travel so far, not downtown. People, people at that time like to go downtown, right? You know, maybe uh, yeah, they may but, feel hungry. Yeah, and yeah. And now the, the food is the attraction. Now people go there, you know, and people, ah, you know, let's go, you know, and we have a free coffee and can go shop around and maybe you can buy something, you know, you know. So it's like a a, um, a trip to the countryside. So it's a family like trip. Country. So it's like you know. You can see this from innovation, right? You know, so people don't, don't think of you know, that's why I use those examples. People always think of innovation as high technology, mm -hmm. but the innovation here is you know offering uh, a family experience, which is IKEA use that. As you see that now, now, when you go shopping for IKEA, it's a family experience. It's not you go there shopping. You know, you go there for a few hours. That's what the the the, the, the idea came from, and the idea came from hardship. You know, because. He would not have come up with this idea without the pressure from the competitors. That is the learning lesson. There was so much business, people want to buy so much that they only have three salespeople. They cannot service because you know people there's so many customers and only three salespeople, so they cannot sell as much. You know, so he said that. Uh, so he had another innovation. He said, uh, since we wouldn't have enough servicing people, there are only three people at the cashier. You know, to pay. People can go in and choose anything they want and to just bring the goods to the cashier, you know? That's innovation, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's self-service, right? So the idea of self-service at, at, at IKEA exists until today, you yeah. know? Yeah, people yeah. just pull the cart, you know, you put your stuff in and, you know, and then, uh, and then you go to the cashier and then, you know, and then so that you save on the, uh, on the labor, you know? So, so that is the innovation in terms of uh, servicing, right? And, and it allows you low cost, it gives you more freedom, 
because some people don't like a, a salesperson always go with you, right? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they found that it's very constraining. You know, it's always a, like in the business model, there's always a salesperson coming with you, and you feel that you know, can you leave me alone? You know, I want time yeah. to think. You know, <laughs> what I listen here. So when the people think about the innovation, so they may think about technology, AI. However, like we can start from. The basic things, the basic even thing, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, product, yeah, yeah. the customer experience, the way that you attract and like get the traffic, and the innovation can happen everywhere. Everywhere, exactly. So that's the principle of innovation. You know, it's so always after go after the non-customers because the, the existing customers there are a lot of competitors, right? But with the non-customers, you have at least for a time, you know, an open market. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious at how like EKR, so they can maintain and remain the momentum of disruptive innovation for a long time like that. Yeah, this is a very important question. If you want to create what they call a scale up the company, right? Well, you know, you, yeah. you go from a small company to a big company, why? Right? And uh, a big company not just in Vietnam but uh, well, international, right? So then you need a lot of very good employees, right? And 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 one of the very important um, issue that many CEOs and founders did not pay enough attention you know, to is the development and training of middle managers. You have all your senior VP, M-1, but M-2 to M-5 are called middle managers. You know, they are directors, that one, you know. And, and I think that in most companies in Asia, you know, people do not train and develop enough those middle managers. You know, they don't have enough competent people. So, so, so as the company grow up, the founders, in my view, are always very visionary. You know, you know, very, very uh, intelligent, very visionary. But as the companies scaled up and grow up, and when the issue the, the command down order, middle managers cannot implement it. Do not exactly. want, and you know, the whole thing quality quality fails. You know, you have a lot of problems. You know. Um, so then, you know, that the company just blew up, you know. I did a lot of study even in Chinese companies and people did not develop that and the whole company blew up. The faster you scale, the faster you go, like, go bankrupt because of the quality issues. I just want to mention that this is not just about the founding company. People, even successful companies who forgot this lesson, the, the most recent example well known to the world is Boeing. You know, yeah. Boeing 7378 Max. Why did, you know, why a company like Boeing, right, who had a very long standing reputation as the number one, you know, companies in the world, right, you know, failed, you know, ha had to do with this problem, you know. Um, investigation shows that, you know, they have for 10 years cut into middle management. It took a long time for a strong company to go down, for people to see the problem, right? Oh, problems already existed. But it was not visible when that blew up exist, you know, or occurred. Then the take a not call could go over, and then you know, and then the problem was, you know, one of the big problem was that, that the company, uh, ten years ago, start to go into financial cost cutting. Mm. Or they said, oh, no, we don't need middle management; they're too costly. We can outsource them." So we know. So we it's, it, every company want to outsource, right? Because it's always on on paper sounds cheaper, right? You know, ah, you know, if we uh, we don't need people inside the company, we can, you know, if we need something, we just go out and we bid. You know, who who give the lower service? You know, we bid them, right? You know, but 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 the problem is that when we bid for Boeing, for example, you know, you had for an aircraft, you have to. Um, an aircraft had thousands of little modules and pieces to fit together, you know, the engine, the electronic systems, you know, there are tens of thousands of modules going to fit together, you know. So you can bid on every single one, right? But you don't have the people to put them together. We has the, you don't have enough people, you know, with the expertise to manage the whole thing. You don't have the knowledge to, to see whether this piece, you know, will fit with this piece, right? And that's, therefore, you know, therefore when they put the, I'm using the example, when they put the door, they didn't know that the door must be put with bolts. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. that's not the piece. That's the right. metaphor. You know? yeah. they forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> you see, and and, 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 and you this think could that be deadly. And that is the middle. You know, it's a middle management function. Okay. You know, that does the integration. You know, they do all this little uh, what they call the in integration and coordination work. Right, that's the role of middle management. Right, yeah, they have the expertise to do the integration and coordination work. Right, you know? top managers do the strategy. 
you know, do the strategy, the marketing, but middle management must make sure that the strategy is well implemented exactly. with quality, with liability, yeah. right? You know, customer service, right? You know, yeah. That's so insightful. I think it's not only about the developing or train the middle manager, but it's also about like how to get them like include. One thing I advise them is that they have to avoid what I call the trap of speed. The faster you scale, the faster you go, like, go bankrupt. When you're too successful, you have to be more humble. You have to balance external and internal. We, I think the whole point of strategy is that how to make the company successful and sustainable. So I, I think you bring up uh, you know, another very important point. One way is to, is to train I've got ten minds, right? Yeah. It's the brain, right? They, they have to be intelligent, smart, you know. Yeah. But this all the important aspect is to get their heart, you know? yeah. They love the company, yeah. you know. So you have to work at the brain, the heart, yeah. The brain, yeah. the heart, right? You have to make them feel uh, inclusive, you know, yeah. that they are not just uh, soldiers, implementation orders. That you know, they're just there to to obey your orders, you know. Yeah. They must feel that they they're part of the company, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they can uh, contribute, you know, they can contribute ideas, you know, they can, they, uh, they must feel like they're not employees, right? You make them feel like a partners, you know, mm, in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The partner, share the partners, yeah. Yeah. Not, not just employee, right? Yeah, you know? not right. employer or yeah, employee. Employee, employee, employee. You, I, I told what you do and you do what I want, right? You know, so that's because people who are smart, after a while, would feel that they are, the talent are not being uh, used enough, right? They would then they would become they would try to create their own company, right? Because you know because I I feel I have a lot of talent, but uh, but my talent is not used in, in this company because I'm just employee. I don't feel like I'm being you know I'm being treated like a partner. So I go out and create my own company, you know, to to become now a founder, right? So if you train your employees well and you want to keep them to make them feel people feel more included. So talk a little bit about the Vietnamese markets. So given the current situation you know the the market like goes grows so fast and there is a lot of we, people call it the VUCA right the VUCA situation and some CEO and leader they they don't know what things that they can start like uh, to develop the middle manager and they even like um, feel confused and overwhelmed the needs of the organization is always like a higher and demand demand like a higher and bigger than for, for even for the CEO and the leaders. I gave advice to a lot of Chinese companies in the previous 10 years. One thing I advised them is that, you know, they have to avoid what I call the trap of speed because because so fast, you are so overconfident, you know, and you take a lot of risk. You want to grab as much market share as you want, right? You know, that this yeah. is a trap, right? You know, you yeah. said, I, I want to go now, even go overseas and buy companies, right? Yeah. Because I have so much money, right? Yeah. It's so successful, you know? You forgot to, to balance life, you know? It's always a balance, mm -hmm. right? You know? Uh, when you're too successful, you have to be more humble. You have to balance external and internal. So you have to, uh, to, to not to become too, uh, what I call too greedy, Mm, you know, greedy, and, yeah, yeah, greedy, and go grab yeah. the market share and grab the customers and get as many customers as you want without developing the ability of companies to serve these customers. There are lots of customers and you cannot serve them well. You get a reputational damage and then you lose all of them. I know it's, it's easier said than, than done because when you are in this fast growing market, you know, it's like, okay, let's go buy as many companies exactly. and that you want, right? And that is the trap. Yeah, especially as a CEO and leader, so they always see the possibility exactly. everywhere. You, you see many opportunities, and, exactly. and, then, and then when the market goes down, they didn't have the money to pay them, you see. What's happening to the world today, because the world is now, the economy, the global economy is contracting today, which is a good thing, you know, because too much inflation is contracting. So, so if you are inflate too fast, then, you know, you are too, too much debt, for example, you know, then you cannot pay your debt, then you go bankrupt. The cost debt, that you need to be fast in this situation because if you don't change or adapt fastly or quickly, so you're gonna be loser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We see, or you know, uh, coming from even Western companies thought that you know said that you want to go fast, but you don't want to go fast to the cemetery. In business, it's the balancing game. So you have to try to manage companies that you get, that you can survive. You know, the high and the low points. 
you know, you say in the middle, and you, that way it, your company can last for like uh, like IKEA for 80 years, 90 yeah. years, and not just so five, 10 years, you know. Yeah. And the game here is the um, is about like a sustainable success. Exactly, sustainable success. We, I think the whole point of strategy is that how to make the company successful and sustainable. And um, there's nothing wrong or right, but I think the, the key words for the founder or the CEO here is the balance. What are the, some common challenges that you observe in strategy execution and how can Vietnamese business leaders navigate them effectively? I think the common uh, limitations you know, is uh, people tend to make a strategy that looks very good on paper, big aspiration, and they cannot implement it, right? And, and they cannot implement it. That's why I said I'm not impressed by, you know, that you are going to, uh, to uh, you know, to expand the company to 50 countries, because I heard the story many, many times, you know, that you be number two in the world, you know, that your market share of the world will be 20%, you know, I said that everybody has 20% of market share of the world, you know, I heard that story many times, but many you cannot time. implement, uh -huh. you cannot, even okay. for big companies, they cannot implement it. Right? Or, the, or, or they cannot even last for 10 years. You know, many companies went bankrupt before even 10 years. I'm not impressed by that. Right? It's much top down. So there's, there's always the strategy and founder has a vision. But the people who have implemented do not fully understand or do not fully buy in. You know? So they said, you know, the idea is so uh, aspirational, it's so ambitious, but we do not know how to implement it. We do not have the resources. We do not have the abilities. We do not have the resources to implement it. You know, so that is a very, very common issue. And then the second issue that related to that is emotion, uh, emotion, or you can call also culture. You know, because you are not even in Western companies, and I'm sure in Asian, people are very afraid to tell bad news to their boss. Exactly. Yeah. Now they always. And you ask them what's happening and people always try, try to, to hide the mistake. Exactly. Always say, oh, things are going okay. You would have been able to fix it. But because they hide it, it's like cancer, right? I use it as cancer, you know? you know? If you have a cancer stage two, you know, you can fix it. But now you're waiting for cancer stage four and then now you said you have a problem, you know? You, you, when you have start to have a lot of pain, then you said, you know, it's too, usually you know, it's too late, right? You know? Or it will be very costly. Very costly to fix it. <laughs> I think it's happening a lot in Asian companies, you know. Exactly, yeah. But but even in Western companies like my study of Nokia, even in Scandinavian companies, yeah. which I did not expect would exist, still existed. Still you know? existed. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so I, mean, I, I think you know? that is about the human as a human uh, exactly. being. Yeah, people that don't want the people are very re reluctant mm -hmm. to tell bad news to other people, especially their their bosses. Yeah. And they and I think because uh, that is the that is the human. The right? human, yeah, the human they, nature. They yeah. don't want to look yeah. bad, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's so basic, but it's very, very impactful because it hurt a lot of companies. Problem for Boeing, Volkswagen, you know, that the banks is all related to that issue. Oh, wow. You know, people what they call you know one Harvard professors called it you know my colleague also uh, Amy Edmonds called that psycho psychological safety. Yeah, yeah, psychology, yeah, yeah. safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that is that is coming from that one, but it's more than yeah. that. But people do not, you know, in organizations, in orchestral culture, right? Mm. That is by far, <laughs> for me, it's a, the most, still today, you know, we, we identified a problem 50 years ago, you know, Amy and, you know, all the other people, you know, but yeah. today, this problem, even with that one, the problem is still not fixed. It's the same, we still have the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so we know about, we know how to call it, but but um, but managers uh, are seems not able to fix it, you know. So when you talk about the strategy, like implementation, and normally the people look at the, okay, this is a framework. PowerPoint framework. Yeah, yeah, you have a PowerPoint. It's a very big <laughs> yeah. PowerPoint of OKPI and yeah, project exactly. management. You know, yeah, you know, and people say, oh well, if we have this plan. Now, with it, the assumption is that it will be executed according to the plan, right? You know, like like you build a house, right? You have a, a blueprint, you know, then the house should be built. But but this is a wrong metaphor because the house is predictable, while strategy is not. Mm, yeah, and today that when we look at the strategy implementation, we look at the the way or the approach, and especially here, like the people. People have an emotion, yeah. and sometimes that like a, we we ignore, ignore or exactly. like underestimate exactly you know the yeah. human emotion. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, and for me, it's always a paradox, right? It's a paradox in the sense of a contradiction because we in Asian society, you know, 
in families, you are, we are being taught that you know you have to be um, sensitive to people's uh, yeah. emotion. You have to be careful, you know, in what we say because it can hurt people's feelings, right? So, so we are being almost educated, you know, in our culture, you know, to to pay attention to people's feelings. But when we are in business, we are very tough, you know. We don't care about people's feelings, you know. I I give an order, I, I pay you, I expect you to do it. I don't care about your feelings, right? That is a paradox of sort. I'm giving you a, um, a, a funny example, but, uh, but I think it's, it's honestly t- a, a real one. You know? So when I try to offer st- my strategic execution advanced program to senior executives in Asia, you know, uh, they don't understand why, you know, I said, Professor Kui, why do we need a course in strategy execution? You know? mm-hmm. And they said, in my company, if people do not want to execute my strategy, I will execute them. Oh. <laughs> you, know? you know, that's oh what they God. said. You know, you know, you know? Oh, wow. you know, I cut their heads, you know, it's my way or the highway, you know? Oh. This mindset yeah. still existed, unfortunately. But I think that the psychology safety here doesn't mean that like you need to compromise oh. or neutral like the relationship base no, no, right? it's not no, it's not it's not about that you know i think mainly asian people confuse you know that yeah. we you know that is about uh, you know uh, favoritism you know to treat people yeah. like your brothers and your sisters you know yeah. this is not about treating like a family members you know mm-hmm. you have to separate um, business relationship from a family relationship because so many family in Big, big companies in Asia are family owned. So they have a big problem already building the top management team because, you know, wife, brothers, sisters, family, you know, that's already a problem for employees, right? You know, but, but, but besides the point, besides the point, this is about treating people with respect. You know, I wrote a case by Madame Wu Bolong Hu, she said, you know, in China, you know, one through she said, you know, said that a boss is not allowed to call an employee like my sister or my brother because you will be manipulating their emotions. And we, we don't want you to manipulate emotions, you know? you know. You have to be professional, you know. You treat them respect, but not, but not use these kind of words to manipulate the emotions because you take advantage of them. So you remind me the conversation that I had with one, the, with one CEO, and he's, uh, I mean, he's CEO and founder as the biggest retail in Vietnam. And one time, he shared with me that um, when he met. The like uh, the small CEO or founder, they always talk about the strategy on paper framework. But when he meet and he has opportunity to meet the like top leader in the world, they all talk about the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and today that you really emphasize and and reinforce. So especially like uh, you are like uh, the top like a number two percent in the world about the strategy innovation but we all talk about the people the psychology safety the emotion in my experience this is the the weakest part of the ceo because most of the ceos of us have been trained what they call left brain training right we yeah are logic number logic science you know uh, you know we we are trained in finance right you know, all of us are trained in finance meaning that you know, that the numbers speak, you know. You always think about return to equity, you know, uh, profit margin, profit EBITDA, you know, profit, you know, shareholders, uh, share share value. You know, we are very, very comfortable, and we speak always this language, you know. But because you are this lack of balance, right? You are too focused on the uh, on the rational financial aspects, you know, and then you completely lose balance on the people aspects. There is a choke. Recently, when people said that, oh, so everyone say that people is the most precious asset. However, when the economy down, they will cut people first. Exactly, exactly. If you're fair to people, it's very fair to respect, you know, you, you, you do not be, give the people the illusion that when the company is going down, that can keep their job, you know. You have to be, I would say, to be, uh, you know, uh, Transparent and direct the people. I said, you know, we are in this business, and in you know, transparent, you need, you know, we need to make money to pay your salary. You know, so if the business goes down, we don't have the money. I have to lay you off. That's it. You know, um, you should understand that. That's why you have to serve the customers very well. You know, because the money comes from customers. You know, now if you are arrogant, you know, and and you don't help me to 
to generate money. I don't have money to pay you, so therefore I have to lay you off. You know, and and no, I'm not going to hide it. You know, so no, this is uh, you should know that. You know, this we are not in the business, we are not in the family. If people understand that, then they want to get laid off. Yeah, you know, that this is a fair game because you know the business is going down. <laughs> we need to cut people, and I have I have never lied to you. leadership, you have to be humble and very self-aware. You don't choose people who, who are exactly like you. You choose a person who you can work with, but who have different skills that complement your skills. To manage a big group is that you have to be fair, but you cannot be kind. I think that like we talk about the, the lack of the development of the middle mid management. Middle management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I think that To be honest, like from my observation in Vietnam and especially for Vietnamese uh, company, I think that the crisis also happened as a leader, the leadership role. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So what's role the leadership play in driving successful innovation and strategy change? The one thing that I suggest the leadership that the world's getting more complex, you know. So so one person usually now does not have all the capabilities all the time to a business. As a leadership, you have to be humble and very self-aware, you know, to know what are your strengths and what are your limitations, what you like to do, what you don't like to do. Yeah. So you have to manage as as not a, a single leader, because I see a lot of single leader, right? Yeah. But as it I thought a TMT, in, in English a top management team. We have a team, you know. So even a top manager you have not one person, but a top management team, TMT, right? So I think it's more and more, you know, uh, that one, you know, and the role management team is to to share the the burden of mm-hmm. leadership mm-hmm. among many people, right? Yeah. So, so so at least you can afford to take a vacation sometimes. Somebody's <laughs> replace you, right? You yeah. know, you cannot always be there, or you yeah. know, you know, oh, I'm the only person, right? Every DB needs me, right? Yeah. But most importantly, you know, you have the much wider skills, mm-hmm. you know, Because you, you don't choose people who, who are exactly like you, right? You you choose a person whom you respect, whom you can work with, but who have different skills that complement your skills. I have examples that some, uh, you know, some companies they have a one person who is very good in strategy, very good in finance, very good engineering process. You know, is like a left brain. You know, he's very. But he hired, you know, a COO who is a very human oriented. You wow. know, now this guy, you know, is a, can go talk and have a beer with people, really good pizza match. people. Yeah, exactly. You know, so so, it's, so both guys are very happy with each other. Right? You know, it's, you know, it's that if I go to to the dinner i'm going I'm, most, I'm, i'm going to most of the dinner party because i love to do what i do you know and employees love me you know because I, because people said you know they don't care why ceo or ceo you know they have the equal power right but the other guys that I, I, you know going to heavy beer or dance or karaoke is just too too tiring for me you know i don't like this work you know but i like to work of finance you know and planning you know so you know it means that like as a leader your role need to develop the group of like top management team yeah, yeah yeah who like can i mean who can support you who can like have a different yeah, skill like different skill from you you yeah, widen your skill you know yeah, yeah. let's, let's say that you know let's say that one person is very good uh, in vietnam and or another person can be very good international or two very good international that's what you can expand right yeah, yeah because you cannot you, know, you cannot be in all the countries at the same time you yeah. know and sometimes that i think that even like with the definition of like who are The, like who is the right person or who uh, who is the right top player? I think that there's also there is um, some confusion because some of the people or some CEO they have a tendency like to recruit the people exactly like that. Like yeah yeah that that is the yeah. big mistake. That's why I said you, know, you have to to hire to hire people whom you can work with whom you can respect, but respect because they have different. Uh, skills than you do. And skills. The skills than you do. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah not the same. And I also use the metaphor that like once the the coach or the CEO or the founder or the owner, if they compromise like a one person in the football team, like who has not performed, so you are like a compromising and or you are like a moving toward the failure. Uh, you, you bring up a important point about you know one one rule leadership is that you know to manage a big group is that you have to be fair. But you cannot be kind. Fair is that you know you you 
the uh, clear uh, performance measurement, right? You know, it has a clear feedback, you know, mm -hmm. and you affect everybody. So if you uh, people, um, let's say, perform beyond expectations, then they get a higher reward. People who perform below expectations should get a lower reward. Mm -hmm. You cannot be kind by giving everybody the same exactly. to make them happy. You know, that's kindness. Yeah. You know, you know, and and people who underperform repeatedly should be fired. Exactly. You know. You cannot be kind by saying, oh, this guy, you know, has a family situation or, you know, uh, you know, he would be, he would be uh, depressed if I fire him, you know, because then you compromise the whole team, you know. So you, you, by being kind to one person, you compromise the, the, the whole team and the whole team will go down in quality. Yeah. So the team member needs a leader whom they can respect rather respect, than yeah, like yeah, a friendly. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a coach. You know? It's not a friendly. You know, you are friendly, but but not but not weak yeah friendly but not weak yeah but you need to be fair but you don't need to be kind, kind. all the yeah, time yeah yeah you're not you know you cannot tolerate weak performers yeah. Yeah. so what lesson can vietnamese business leaders learn from global best practice in innovation and strategy execution professor i think that one of the things that i i noticed in a lot of not just in vietnam but in many asian companies that's why you know we are not innovating uh, enough i think you know we're asking you know Tell me, you know, how many Asian companies are doing something that would change the quality of life for humanity? That is my test of innovation. Right? It's not about building, you know, some technology, but you know, what are you doing as a company that is known across the world, you know, that changing the quality of life for humanity? For example, you know, recent examples include the Pfizer, right, who come up with uh, the COVID vaccine. Right? Yeah. We thought the COVID vaccine would all here be wearing masks, you know, and we'd yeah. be still in hospitals, right? You know, so that is a clear innovation, you know, that that improved the welfare of humanity, right? You know, or more, or the Moderna, right? And if you today, if you look at the recent all the recent examples, is like uh, the Google search, right? If we don't have Google search today, we don't have, we will know know each other, you know, you know, we no no, you know, you know, we'll be reading some books, or we still go to the library, you know, looking at books, you know, we're very old, right? Or the mobile phone, for example. You know, you know, there are different prices, mobile phone, because today we you know how the mobile phone changed our way of life. You know, can call the taxi or the food, you know, communicate with each other. Before that, you know, 40 years ago, you know, we would have something, a telegram. You know, each telegram would cost like, uh, you know, two, three dollars per word, you know, so it'd be very, you know, we cannot even send a message because it's too costly, right? So those are examples of innovation, I think, you know, that changed our quality of life. We asked the question then, you know, why are those innovations coming mostly from, you know, America or from European nations, you know? You know, you know, you know China, India are just copycat, you know. They, they haven't done anything, despite they have 1.5 billion people. <laughs> and they said they have a lot of smart people, right? This is the question that we should ask ourselves. People know the principle, you know, but Innovation is to turn these things into something that people can use, you know, to do the vaccine people can put into the body, right, you know, and that requires a lot of work, you know, this is not just, you know, some, some the paper, you know, yeah. some, some principle, right, you know, yeah. so all that, we don't, we are not good enough. So, like, we really think about, like, um, like, how we change the quality of the humanity, yeah. and we really think about, like, it's not about the paper, strictly good on paper only, but on also about the execution and implementation. Exactly, you know, and we have the high high ambition. You know, it's not just about making money, right? You know, most people in the West who makes who makes a lot of money usually they, do, they did not start by aiming. I want to be rich, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they always said, you know, I want to do something new, something that would change the the, the way people the world yeah. would operate, right? And then they become rich after that, like Pfizer, like other people, to become rich after that. But they didn't, you know, they didn't start with the idea that I want to do this because I want to be rich. Yeah. It seemed like uh, the CEO or the founder like uh, can stop thinking about the mission of this company. It's not exactly. about the yeah, being purpose, rich you know, or yeah, yeah, being, mission, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mission of purpose, you know. Mission and the mission of purpose. purpose, and that attracts a lot more people, yeah. you know, because they said, you know, wh why I'm working with this company? Because I'm we, we producing something that makes, uh, you know, that reduce the suffering, um, you know, or makes humanity live a better life, you know? Yeah. And that everybody would be captive. Talk about motivation, people would like to work for this company, yeah. besides earning some good money. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, when we, when we like get rich or like a fulfill, realize our purpose, so we can be rich and the money will That's come. That's it. Exactly. Like we can become naturally. Don't, don't worry. The money will come. You know.
but but normally that people should yeah. only think about uh, the money uh, and the not money. first. Yeah. yeah, people who usually think money do not get the money. Yeah, yeah. look at all the examples. Now Elon Musk, uh, no Warren Buffett, who uh, you know, uh, they, they don't think I, I want to be rich. You know, I said I want to to be successful. Yeah. Elon Musk, you know, yeah. or Jeff Bezos, yeah. you know, uh, Steve Jobs, they, you know, yeah, Steve they all Jobs. They want to make a revolution. Yeah, revolution yeah. change the you change, know change the, the industry. Yeah. yeah, high ambition, right? But you know, so I, I didn't say nobody. I want to be a billionaire. You know, no, no. No, and no, I don't no, think that's... with that purpose <laughs> you can influence <laughs> exactly. anyone like, who follow. Exactly. Follow you know, yeah, look at all people. those people who now are very super rich, right? Yeah. You know, Jeff Bezos, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, you know, anyway, yeah. Yeah. anybody. Yeah. And I think that I want to be back to the, the story at the beginning of the, this conversation. When we think about the inv- innovation, we, we may think about something really big. However, like uh, we can start very small step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you yeah, can yeah. start like to think about what is the purpose of this company. Yeah, yeah. It's not only about the money or being rich or being successful for for you or for yourself or for your team. And it can like the innovation, the innovation here that can start with uh, whether we are focusing too much either on paper or like execution or, or implementation. And also we think about like how we can change the way that we serve the customer, yeah. how we develop the middle manager to equip them about the, to equip their capability and their the skill set. Yeah. To motivate the, them. The, yeah, motivate them as well. And we also talk about the innovation or we talk about the strategy execution implementation here. We talk about how we ensure that we can create the psychology safety. For the people to feel, um, like uh, to feel inclusively, yeah, to be included, like moving toward the higher purpose. Uh, higher purpose, yeah. yeah. This is a good summary. Yeah, thank you so much. So that is the sharing uh, from Professor Nguyen Hui Kui uh, about leading organizational innovation. And once again, a big thanks to Upchain, the leading brain in World Space Solution in Vietnam, for making this episode of People Matter Season Two possible. Please support us by subscribing to this channel and following us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts to listen to the conversation anywhere or anytime. And don't forget to subscribe to this newsletter. Do not miss out on other interesting content updated every Thursday at 9 a.m. I will put the link below the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.